Welcome guys to this video about my PUBG settings, something that a lot of people have been asking me to make a video about, so here it is. First, let's go into my graphics settings, and in here, on my resolution, I use 1440p. This is because it is so much easier to see details far away, and it's easier to spot people if you have a higher resolution. Uh, 1440p seems for me to be the perfect sweet spot for PUBG, I can still have good performance, while I uh, still can see enemies very clearly. If I do 1080p here or even lower, then it is so hard to see sometimes if a guy is a bush or a guy. So that is why uh, I love this specifically, actually. That, that is the most important thing for me. Um, it's just easy to spot enemies. And of course, it looks absolutely great as well. Lobby FPS, I have this maxed to 60. It's capped to 60, you cannot go higher. And this is because you don't need more than 60 FPS in the lobby. There's no reason for your graphics card to work really hard. It's gonna run really fast. It's gonna make a lot of noise, generate a lot of heat, use a lot of power when you're in the lobby. There's no need for that. And when we go lower in the advanced settings here, uh, my render scale is 100. Uh, this is perfect, I think, is because when you set your render scale to something higher than 100, it will render the game at a high resolution and scale it down. This is going to make the game look better, but unfortunately, it's also going to cost you a lot of frames. Uh, use this if you have a resolution of 1080p. Uh, that's the only reason I would use this if I use that resolution. It does make the game look clearer because 1080p is, is really bad for having clarity. So I keep this on 100 though, uh, because of my resolution right now. In my FPP camera field of view, I use 103. This does give me the widest possible field of view, and it is also costing FPS again, because if there's a lot of stuff on your screen, like there is with a higher field of view, it will naturally require more from your computer. Bring this all the way down to, to 80, you're gonna have more frames, but it's gonna be very claustrophobic, I think. 90 seems to be a really good point. Um, however, I just have been playing with on 103. Pure preference here, pure preference, guys. In the other advanced settings, I have anti-aliasing on Ultra. This will give a calmer picture, which will make it much easier to see moving targets. There's a guy moving far away, you're gonna see that movement. If you have anti-aliasing on low or even very low, it's gonna be very flickery. Everything's gonna, gonna feel like it's moving around and it will just be really hard to focus on the important movement that you're gonna be needing to see in this game. So I have this on Ultra. I will also say it's okay to have it on high, but it depends on your system, right? Post-processing and shadows, both on low, uh, simply for performance issues. This just makes the game run a little bit better for me, so I have these on low. Textures, I have this on ultra, because my graphics card has a lot of VRAM, so it doesn't really cost me any FPS, not anything I am, I'm noticing at least, and uh, it makes the game looks a lot better. If you have this on very low or low, you can see from the example out there to the right that it does uh, make things look much simpler, which is in theory an advantage, but it does also look very bad. So I have this on ultra because it looks awesome. My effects is on low, even though if you have this on ultra or high, it will make it easier to see the flash of a gun being fired. However, it's also gonna cost FPS and I just found at the end of the day, I would rather have the extra FPS I get by putting this on low. But yes, you do have an easier time seeing at the flash from a weapon if you put it to high or ultra. Now, foliage is something that I've been asked about a lot. Foliage is, uh, it's just a visual thing. Like it's, it just makes it look better, right? If you have it on ultra, all the trees will render on the map. And when you fly in the plane in the beginning of the game, you will see every single tree down there. This just looks great and makes the landscape look awesome. So that's why I have it on ultra. I haven't found any examples or any evidence at all of having it on ultra being a disadvantage for gameplay. So um, I have it on ultra. And also, in just case, in case you're wondering, grass rendering distance does not change with foliage, all right? View distance is on medium. And I could put this to ultra and I would have more buildings rendering and it's gonna look better. And I might put this to ultra at some time, but right now it's just medium because I, you know, I just found it would be, it, it was a good balance between visibility and, uh, and performance. 
So uh, vehicles and enemies do all render at 1000 meters. This is unaffected by the setting. So it's not going to be easier to see enemies at all if you change the setting. Sharpen and enable because it is nicer with a more crisp and sharp looking image and it's easier to spot enemies. So I like this. I have this enabled. VSync should always have this disabled because it will create input lag. It's going to cause input lag, meaning that when you move your mouse, when you do something, when you make an input to the computer, there's going to be a longer delay, a longer lag between that input being translated into something on the computer. So this is bad. Disable it. Don't use it. Motion blur, the same with this. It's going to blur out things when you move around. It's going to blur out the vision when you move your camera quickly and something. Don't use this, in my opinion. In my audio settings, uh, what I want to mention here is HRTF. This makes it so much easier to hear exactly where a gunshot is being fired from. It can make it a little bit harder to hear how far away it is in the beginning when you change this, but I made a video about this and this is so much better at judging exactly which direction a gun is being fired from. And this will also make it possible to hear the difference from a gun being fired in front of you compared to behind you. That is not possible with uh, when you have this disabled. It is the same audio that's being played in front of behind you when this is disabled. So do keep this on enable. In my control settings, my mouse sensitivity, it is what it is, but my vertical sensitivity multiplier is the interesting part here. I used to have this on one because that is going to give the same sensitivity when you move your mouse horizontally and vertically. Now I have more sensitivity when I move it vertically than I move it horizontally. This is because it makes it easier to aim while spray controlling. And the reason is quite simple. When you move your mouse down in a spray control, let's look at this white line you got here and look at my mouse. Um, when I move my mouse down, when I spray control, if I move it down really quick, that I would need to if I have low sensitivity and I don't use vertical sensitivity multiplier, then I would need to move my mouse down quickly when spray controlling. And my aim would not be as accurate because you see, when I move my mouse quickly, my mouse is, is not going to be on this white line. <laughs> that was really bad, actually. But you, you, get the, you get the point, right? It's really difficult when you move your mouse quickly to keep it on the line. But if I increase the sensitivity vertically, I'm going to have more control as I move my mouse down. So if I move it really slow, it's really easy to keep the mouse in the wide line. And my aim would be so easy to control while I spray control. So that's simply why. It's not difficult to move your mouse down. That's not, that's not difficult. But it is difficult to move your mouse horizontally while moving your mouse down quickly. That's it. In my key input method settings, I have crouch and toggle. Always have this. I don't know why. It's just a preference. And um, what's really important here and what I don't think is a preference is my peak, aim and ADS. These are all on hold. And this is because it makes it easier to quickly engage and disengage. And the best example I can probably give you about this is when fighting from behind a tree. You will be able to quickly lean out on the left side, shoot, and then lean out on the right side, shoot. And this is all super fluent and it combines ADS and, and leaning very, very beautifully. And it makes it really, really hard to get shot and very easy to confuse your enemies and kill them. So this is something I would really highly recommend. This is much more complicated when you use it on toggle because you got to click so many times on your buttons, right? All right, so in my key bindings, I'm just going to be talking about what is really important and you're going to be able to see the rest uh, of the key bindings for yourself. The first thing that you need to do is separate vault and jump. This is very important because otherwise, if you don't, you might jump when you want to vault and you might vault when you want to jump. This is, of course, terrible if you want to jump to look over a wall and your character latches onto that wall, that, that wall and starts vaulting over, then you're just going to die. And the same thing if you just want to vault and you jump instead. Let's say someone is following you. You got to quickly vault into a building inside of a window and then you jump out there and then the guy catches up to you and shoots you in the back when you finally get the vault done. So bad. Make sure you separate these. In my combat settings, I have aim set to my mouse. Aim is important. It makes it much better to shoot a pistol, I think. The pistols have great accuracy while aiming uh, rather than going ADS. 
So I will definitely recommend having this bound to something like your mouse. I, I think this is a great advantage. And also when using some iron sight weapons early game, this is also something that can work really, really well. And another thing in my combat settings will be my peaking. Peak left, peak right. I have these on Q&E, which are the default key bindings. However, some people might want to swap these around because it can be difficult for your fingers to press A, W and Q at the same time, which is what you want to do if you move left, forward and leaning to the left. So a trick here can be to reverse these. Have peaking left on E, peaking right on Q. Now this is going to make it significantly more natural for your fingers. And this has helped so many people. It, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but try this if you have a hard time using Q and E uh, naturally. And to my item settings, which is my healing, what I want to mention here is just that bandage and energy drinks are super important to have a hotkey for. And the reason is also quite simple for this is that these are quick heals. You want to be able to fire up a quick heal when you need a quick heal. Very often you will want to use a quick heal in a situation where you don't have a lot of time to quick heal. And so you do not want to spend any time opening your inventory and right clicking this item. In a lot of situations, this does, is not a problem with healing, like especially when using a medkit. This is something you often would use when you do have more time um, to heal up. But still, all of these are worth binding and I bound some of them, not all of them. That's because I don't have an infinite amount of keys to bind my stuff to, right? <laughs> so that's it. For my vehicle seat settings, I have Shift W for the driver's seat. And this is because when you get into a car and you start boosting, you will hold Shift and W. Now, if you get into the back seat, then this will automatically swap you to the driver's seat and start driving. Very clever, it's gonna remove this need to press Control 1 first. And my other settings are C2 and C3, for that's E and Q, my leaning key bindings. This is so natural to me because when I press E, I normally lean right, but I will go to the right seat of the car if I press E inside a car. And I can shoot out of the window or I can get out on that side if needed when I'm in a combat situation. Or let's say I park my vehicle when I get on the right side because there's a guy on my left side and I need to use the vehicle for cover. And the same thing goes with Q. This swaps me to the back seat on the left side of the car behind the driver's seat. Really important as well because then I can shoot out of the car in that side because you can't shoot from the driver's seat of course so that is super uh, super nice there in my ui settings the quick marker is the one thing i want to mention here when you shoot in a direction uh, and you have this bound to your mouse one it will automatically place a quick marker on your compass in the direction you're shooting in so that is going to make it so much easier for your teammates to know where you're shooting. Get your entire team to put this setting up here and it's going to make it so much easier to assist your friends when they are fighting someone else. And I think that was all of it I wanted to talk about. The rest of the settings here are completely standard and I didn't change anything here. So that's it. In my gameplay settings, um, the first thing is colorblind mode. Colorblind mode is going to make it easier to see enemies uh, when they get shot in some situations. Protonopia will, make, will give the enemies this bluish color of blood when they get shot. This is going to make it slightly easier, especially in some environments, to see that you hit an enemy. This is something I can recommend. It does make the game look less realistic and just different, but uh, try it out. My crosshair is set to a color that is just going to make it easier to see on the stream. Because I also do stream. So that's why. And I would also say that crosshair color is a preference. Just make it sure that it stands out in the environment. Like don't make it white and play be candy for instance, right? And the rest of these settings are all, you know, I, I don't really want to talk about these. You can just see them and you can you know, get, maybe get inspired from it. But that's what I use here. Functionalities, of course, I have my firing mode set to full auto for all the weapons. It's just nice to have full auto when you pick up a gun, right? And my auto reload is set to disable because I don't like having an auto reload. You might like this. I don't. It's a preference. 
and that's it so guys thank you very much for watching this video these were my settings i hope you found this helpful don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this video and i'll see you guys next time